All right, come on over this way. Thank you. Are you okay if we record for training? Yes. Okay. They've been recording every step in their process. Oh, dope. Document, document, document. Say Dharma? Yeah. Nice. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to introduce this. Uh, him. This is Tom Franco. He is the artist of this show here. Um, and this is a very interesting exhibit slash collaboration slash cross-country experience um, that uh, this exhibit kind of has been, or things around the exhibit, I should say. So I guess first, I would like to talk a little bit about you, the artists, and the exhibit. Itself. Related to James Franco, right? Yeah. That's what I, not for real? For real. I, oh, you sweet. <laughs> should I keep my mask on or you? Should yeah, I, I, I can see the resemblance. Yeah, I definitely can see the resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel about if you, As long as you're a separate James Franco, yeah. the, the actor. Okay. Are you all comfortable with me doing this? Yes. Okay, I think you'll hear me better. Yeah. Okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so my name is Tom Franco. I am one of the Franco brothers. I'm the middle brother. And this is my wife, Iris. Hi. Hi. And we have Maui right there, Dharma, Nacho, and Queso. Oh. Wow. Cool. So we have about, what, 20 minutes to talk a little bit? Okay. So I want to spend the first part just talking about me as an artist, and then I want to talk to you about our U.S. art tour that we're on right now. Okay. So um, if you can help me with time, that'd be great. Um, I am a mixed media, found object, collaborative artist. I live in California, uh, both Oakland and Los Angeles. So I do a lot of visual art. I also do films with my wife, Iris, which are narrative and documentary based. I run an art collective called the Firehouse Art Collective. And that is a series of lo physical locations for artists to have studios, house, co-housing, event space, some retail, some cafes. So it's community, building community. I found that after studying art at school that what I didn't learn at school was that even more than half of being an artist is creating community. And that's, that's my niche. I know that's not 100% true for all artists, but for me that made a lot of sense. So I, I, um, I emphasize a lot on story, on narrative in my work. And uh, another way to say that is a vision, having a, a, um, a meaning behind what I'm doing each time I'm making work. I think that's a balance between technique, how I actually make the work, and then um, balancing that out with the uh, vision. And I, I put more emphasis on the vision because I, I feel like technique is something in a way that is like handwriting. You know, everybody has handwriting, everybody has technique. So I, I like to embrace the natural expression uh, as an artist. Um, uh, uh, obviously, technique can be learned and trained and you can change your handwriting if you really want to, but there's a nice sweet spot where it just feels comfortable. I don't want to be in the studio making work and feeling like it's a chore or like, oh my God, I have all this painting or sculpting to do for whatever reason. Uh, I want to be in the studio feeling excited, um, comfortable, like I can do it. Because um, uh, uh, if I'm not comfortable, I'm not going to go all the way. As an artist, I, I, I feel like it really does take 150% to really follow through. There's a lot of challenges um, stacked up against being an artist. So with that said, I've naturally found ways to trick my mind from getting in the way. I, I think that the natural expression is like, well, what, what, what's actually 
actually going on? How can I be as honest as possible? Not just honest, but how can I go deep? How can I reveal the, the, the narrative, the visions that really serve me and the community? How do, and, and how that translates is how do I be a better person? How do I be my best person and have that ex come out, um, streaming out of me as an artist uh, in, 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 the, in the visual forms that I'm using? So one way I do that is I use found objects. So if, I'm, if I don't know how to use an object, I'm, I'm tricking my mind to say, oh, I have to be inventive here. I have to be on my game to figure out what to do with these objects. Another way to do that is through collaboration. If I'm working with another artist on a piece, and, I, and oftentimes it's something like, I do a move and I pass it to another artist and they do a move. Sometimes it's we're all working, maybe more than one artist, on the same piece at the same time. And that can be that can be like a party. We have art parties at my house or at my studio or at other people's studio. One of the funnest things I, I do is let's go to a new studio or a new location and make work in that location because that location will stimulate something that I wouldn't have made otherwise. These things get me out of my, my mind. I don't want to think too hard about what I'm doing. Obviously, I do think about it. And, I, and oftentimes I make something and then I interpret it after the fact. <laughs> Another layer of tricking my mind is we go on the road. We go, we, 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 uh, we do like live art. So if I'm, if I'm working in collaboration in front of an audience, that's a, a, that's a big way to be like, oh, um, I'm, I have to be spontaneous. I have to be in the moment. I have to, it's, it's more like a performance, like a, a, a theatrical, artist or a dancer or a musician, I often uh, refer to musicians, so that we have like a, a visual art band and we go and do a show. And that's a, that's a great reference to feeling like not being a, a classic way to say it is writer's block. Like, you know, I don't have writer's block. We're playing a show, like we're playing jazz together in front of an audience. So that's, that's, a, that's a powerful one too. So that's a little bit about my technique and what I do uh, uh, as a visual artist. So this show, it's a guitar mask show. Um, felt a little inspired by uh, the Marvelocity show, just, just people, characters wearing masks, putting on superhero powers. Um, uh, what is that reference for me? I, I am a big into meditation, so it's part one of the techniques that I use to find meaning and purpose in my life and in my art is to go within and find uh, different versions of myself. What's, what, what is layered underneath my skin, you know, the, the, the surface layer? Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes that is a direct technique for coming up with a vision. These guitar masks ended up being, well, the guitars are, are objects that I collected over time. People would give them to me, they're broken guitars. Uh, the smaller ones are from a kid's music class that we used to have in the Bay Area, and the kids would break them and the teacher would give them to me. So I've been collecting these for several years now. And then the masks, these are wooden masks from Mexico that we collected on our, our travels. And um, it's, it humors me a lot. It's, it's funny and sad to find beautiful pieces of sculpture, usually it's sculpture, that are pretty much discarded. Like, these are... These are $35 masks you can buy, and they're exquisitely carved. If anybody uh, in, in, in my field carved one of those, they would be selling for a lot more, and they would not be anonymous. And I find that all over the world, that there's, there's great pieces of sculpture that I then incorporate into my work. I also incorporate other people's art into my work, if they allow me, if I'm not like breaking too many rules. Um, uh, and I consider those sound objects as well. Um, the, the other pieces on these, you will see large hands, which are made out of tin foil wrapped in tape and then heavily painted on. Uh, these are house paints, so they're pretty durable. That was made by one of our collaborators, Julie Spilly. The, the, the bittersweet part of that is uh, we are including her in the show, but she has a degenerative disease, so she can't make her art anymore. She can't use her hands on her art. So it was, it, I thought it was very touching to have her hands in the sculptures. I'm also big into ceramics, so you'll find different ceramic pieces that are handmade, glued onto these uh, guitars. 
representing different things. Each guitar has its own character. This is kind of role playing, uh, mass role playing. Um, the, the title, Beyond Struggle, When the Future Hello Meets Identity Deep Roots. It's, it's, it's a reference to having contentment. Um, we're, we're in a day and age where identity is really important and it's, it's, it's in all sorts of conversations on small and large scales and it can't really be denied this day and age. So one uh, personal way that I deal with that is how do I tap into a deep identity that is not, does not change, does not, um, you know, back to that handwriting thing. Who am I on the deepest level that is unchanging and unshakable? Um, and with that comes contentment, love, appreciation, gratitude. So it's, it's playing with the virtues, right? Um, life's virtues. So each piece pretty much has one virtue that it's playing with and uh, extrapolating on. So if, if I were to look at one of these tags, and I think these are very helpful tags if you're talking to another person about what each piece is, because it tells a little story on what character each guitar mask is. So why don't I just read one? Mm -hmm. I think you have some, but not all of them, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So this one, it says, my mind finds you. So it says it here too, the, the sun also rises, my mind finds you. So the tag says, this guitar mask shows a traditional image of fearlessness while also storytelling a connection between two people in the modern day of technology. There is an ancient forest culture parallel with a modern video screen culture. There is not a timeline factor in people's need to connect with one another. The drive remains the same. So it's, it's uh, the drive to connect, right? So this, is, uh, this mask is a, is a uh, classic image of fearlessness. It's like a warrior mask, the face within the tiger, the big cat. And then you have all these hands and hearts reaching out and faces, um, wanting, you know, uh, uh, welcoming, welcoming faces. And then on the hand, it's a computer screen. It's a modern day age way for us to connect. Uh, so you, you, you know, just playing with the visuals of, of ideas around what does it mean to connect? How do we do it? So this this guitar is visually. I think I think um, you know trust your visuals. Uh, there's you know we I wrote something about it, but trust the visuals. What are the what are the visual storytelling elements that it's telling you? And and allow yourself and and the people you're talking to go into that and play with that because you can tell a story here in multiple different ways. You can you can start from the fierceness or you can start from the technology. You know whatever. It, it, the idea in these pieces is whatever strikes you, go with it. And, and it, it, will, it will be fun to walk through the piece that way. Um, you could say these are stories in a, in a non-linear way. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to look at another piece? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Any piece that jump out to you all? What do you want me to take? This one? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this one, oh, I should, well, I should also say, so this one, the collaborator is recognized as um, Jilly Smilly. So this, this, she made this hand. Mm -hmm. This one is called Wind Dragon. The collaborators are recognized as Jilly Spilly for the hand. And Alan Shin, who is on tour with us, he's one of my main collaborators. So he assembled some of these elements uh, onto the composition. So Wind Dragon. This one reads, this guitar mask has the quality of all seen, past and future, inside and outside. Thoughts and speech are all known in this room. It is fiery. Dharma. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, they are. No animals work around this tour. <laughs> <laughs> this guitar mask has the quality of all seeing, past and future, inside and outside. Thoughts and speech are all known in this realm. It is a fire and clear of judgment. Nothing can remain here that is not pure essence. All things will pass. So we, we left 
out of all the guitars, this one has the most like striking color. It doesn't have too much layering into it. Um, Alan is a, a purist in that way. He really likes the idea of what's what's your S essential mark. Make a mark and don't touch it because you're gonna screw up that energy, right? So I'm always debating with him and battling with him. I'm like, okay, can't we? I'm gonna paint it more. He's like, no, don't touch it. So um, this really has his um, aesthetic to it. And then uh, we we ended up putting more ceramic medallions on here. He, he works with wood. He did this fascinating cut in the wood that I love. Um, so it's it's um, this this one kind of has the spirit of uh, um, you know everything's everything's okay. We, it, it, it sees everything, good and bad. Uh, uh, you know, don't judge. Don't judge what's going on. It's from a higher perspective. It, 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 it's meant to be. Let it let it play out. Sometimes there's um, uh, blessings in disguise that way. So, um, as a matter of time, right? Uh, you're at 13 minutes. Okay, so you let's talk it. about the tour a little bit. So we're on a, a U.S. art tour across the country. There's um, a, a, a rotating amount of artists with this. Do you want to talk about the name? Should I do that first? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is a children's story that I'm doing with my mother and her brother, Uncle Michael. Michael Byrne lives in Cleveland, Ohio, and he runs the Byrne Gallery over there, for the Byrne Collection, which is Japanese prints. Very, very nice Japanese prints. Um, a side note to that, grandmother too, that started with Yuko's exhibit here. And that's how we kind of, this all got rolling, was we had Yuko's exhibit in the other gallery, and Michael and Yuko were, and I were talking and showed me some images, and then we got connected, and here we are now, three years later. Yeah. So, Dope. Well, sorry. Wrong by your grandmother. My grandmother started that gallery in, uh, I don't know what year. <laughs> it's a second generation gallery. And um, that is very relevant because this story is told by my mom and uncle, and they have another sister, about their bedtime stories from their dad when they were young. And he would, um, he would go upstairs. This is usually during house parties. He was, a, he was an oral surgeon, so they would have events at their house every once in a while. And it would be time for bed. So he'd say, okay, time for bed, kids. And they'd go upstairs. And instead of putting them to bed, he would tell these wild stories uh, with, with Jewish um, heritage. The, the, it's a Kanish story, so these are food, Jewish foods, uh, and, the, and the characters are all named after Jewish foods. And he would rile them up and tickle them to death uh, to go to bed. And my grandmother would always be like, what are you doing? Like, they're not gonna go to bed, <laughs> crazy. And, um, but the kids loved it, and, and they, they would um, you know, stand at the top of the stairs and say, uh, w W A K S W W A K S W W A K S, and he knew right away that this we want to finish story. Uh. Uh, and so you can read the story here. The whole story is played out here. This is only half of the illustrations, finished illustrations, and the text is not going to be printed. You don't you don't see the text here, but you see the text here. So you, so anybody can read the whole story and look at the images that way. It's very fun. So we're on a U.S. art tour. We're, we're doing 30 cities in six weeks. We started in the West Coast, um, and it's called No Going Back is the name of the tour. K-N-O-W, Going Back. The group's name is The Grateful 8 to 10. And that's because there's about 8 to 10 of us rotating uh, in attendance. Uh, it, it, it does have a lot of references to the 60s and um, you know, buses that hippie buses that drove across the country and changed culture for everybody and created uh, created hip, the hippies really. Um, but we're we're not doing drugs in the bus. We're doing art, and our our message same difference. <laughs> our message is to connect with community in collaborative art. So we're going to art institutions like this one. Uh, we're going to colleges, museums, galleries, art centers, and just settings where people gather, and we're doing uh, pre-planned art activations, 
of all mediums. We've, done, we've actually done a lot of ceramics, uh, but we're doing landscape paintings along the way, which is a natural thing while you're traveling. Mm -hmm. We're also doing clayscapes along the way, and we're looking for kilns to fire them in. Um, we, we have done two thirds of the journey we're through. Uh, so by January 1st, we'll complete the tour. This was, this was a major show on the, on the tour. This show actually instigated the whole journey because we were deciding how are we gonna get this work over here and set up the show and, and be here in person for it. We really wanted to be here in person and started, started thinking, well, we could rent a car and drive it, okay. And then as I started, I'm, I'm uh, dyslexic when it comes to geography. So I'm like, where's that place? But when I looked at a map, every six hour drive was a very interesting place. And it's oh, we should definitely stop there. And uh, it added up really quickly. And uh, I couldn't believe how connected the, the country is as far as art centers go. And interesting, uh, 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 just you gotta kinda gotta go see it. You can't, you can't just hear about it, you gotta go see it. And I've never driven across the country. So I started asking my friends, would you like to go with me? And they were all like, yeah, we'd love to go with you. And um, we've done, it's not like a totally new thing. Like we've gone to places together to do art activations, but not so many in a row. Usually we've done, we do one at a time. So this was a graduation move for us to do so many. And, and we've been really embraced. And it, it's been a wonderful experience as far as seeing what's possible. So many people, so many institutions, institutions are, are really um, uh, laden down with their scheduling and the, and, the, and the planning and the programming. And by coming in a bus just for a day or two, it's just like, yeah, come on in. Like, we can do that, that's easy. But when they, once they say, come on in, it's like, oh, we, we can help make um, uh, collaborations possible between institutions, um, uh, between young artists, between between uh, uh, schools and uh, just help you that glue between where it, it's, it's a natural fit, but who's got the time to do it? Like we, we are acting as that glue and uh, a voice of collaboration, art making in community settings. Okay. I, have, I wanted to bring the bus over, but this is our one day off. So all the artists are resting right now at the hotel. Aww. It was difficult to bring it over. Um, what I was thinking to do and obviously we can share photos of the bus, but what I was thinking to do is we have a miniature bus that we painted in the same style, because <laughs> uh, it's all painted. And we, we were at Art Basel Miami last week and, and that's where we painted everything. Um, and so I could leave that in the gallery as a reference, if that helps. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Okay, we can do that. And then we, we also have a uh, Instagram page, which I don't, I don't know if it's on there, but you could write it down. What is it? It's no going back. K N O W going back. Got it. On Instagram. Dope. I think that's in the packet. But you should you should check it out because it's basically kind of documenting the whole trip and stops and scenes. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. And we'll keep adding to it. It'll could be... you explain what the ice creams? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> I forgot. So um, it's kind of like a band name. You know, it's like uh, oh, okay, like the Supremes. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, like, like, I see uh, the. I'm okay. so bad with names, but. Um, okay. Oh, I see the. So like the Grateful Eight. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. same. Okay, I see it. Okay, we, I used to be. It used to be Tom Franco and the Dreams, and then I was like, well, it's not quite the same group anymore. Let's do a different name. So okay. we, we did Tom Franco and the Ice Creams. I, I I had that in mind for a while, and I was like too scared, too chicken to use it, because I was like, if nobody's gonna know what that is. It's like. That's dope. Who no, cares? I like it. Like, let's use it. It's awesome. Teresa wanted to have ice cream at the opening, um, but maybe next time. Oh, hey, Teresa. <laughs> uh, but like, uh, uh, who's who's the my, one of my favorites is uh, the guy with the big Frank Zappa. And the mothers. And the mothers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing my age now, and I. Good job. <laughs> Good job. There's some great names out there that you know you, you just start. Oh, I know who that is. It's like that's a weird name, you know. So uh, we're kind of we're, we're very much in the in in the uh, in the in the tradition of bands. I I have a vision for this kind of work that we're doing on the tour is it's um it's not just institutions but 
as, as people who, and I'm not the only one in the group that make art collectives, so we just rent a space and we ask artists to occupy it and, and make their art there. That's an art collective. So across the country, there's art collectives. And it, it's an interesting idea to say, okay, there's just like a music tour. A, a, a band goes on tour and a booking agent books them out and they just go, boom, 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 boom. We can do that with visual artists. Go on tour. It's not just a one stop. And don't spend like a year at one stop. Like, go around. It's, it's very um, eye-opening and it's, it's great for the communities for fresh artists to come in and uh, uh, do some active art making. I, I, I have a thing about, I work with a lot of artists. So we have 100 artists that rent with us every month back home. So I'm dealing with artists all the time. I never say no to meeting an artist. And it's, it's like a miseducation, I, I, I feel like. Artists are trained, I was trained to be an isolated creator. Go to your room, make all your stuff, come out once a year and display it and we'll have a nice little opening. And it's like, that doesn't feel so good. Um, uh, and I was, I was starting to do a lot of performance art, like I was in a dance troupe and then I was doing martial arts and Tai Chi. And all these groups were essential uh, group activities. You couldn't do it alone. So um, uh, it was like, why are the visual artists this way? And, and the idea of uh, opening that up more, having the, having the visual artists be the performer. Uh, so much fun happens in the studio when, when people are making their stuff. So I, I, I'm all about like exposing that. Come to the studio, see what happens. Go around on tour, show people what you do. There, there's, no, there's no such thing as like, in my world, there's no such thing as like, oh no, this is my secret recipe of making art. I'm, I feel like if you can make this, do it. And I dare you to make it. And it's, if you, your handwriting's not gonna be the same as my handwriting, and let's compare. And, and I will borrow from you as you borrow from me. And, and a lot of magic happens that way. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, your family apparently are just a big group of artists. Yeah. So, as you mentioned your mom was an artist. Your dad an artist too? Yeah, my dad's not alive anymore. He, they both, parents, both my parents went to um, school for painting. They, they attended Stanford for painting. So they were in the tradition of the Bay Area figurative art uh, uh, painting movement. So they, were, you know, that's like Deben Corn. And uh, their teacher was Frank Lebdell. There's a there's an exciting moment, uh, but they also they were trained with this idea of if you're going to be a painter, you're going to suffer. Like uh, the hours are hard. The, you know you better go get a job at McDonald's. And they were thinking like I don't know about this. Um, by the time they graduated, and so I, I they didn't they didn't like force feed the three uh, the three boys. Uh, you have to be artists. They just kind of left it open like. Maybe don't be an artist, like try something else. But we naturally all gravitated to, towards it. And I feel like we kind of picked up where they left off. And, and, and they didn't leave off, but um, as a visual artist, I felt, I felt like I did. My mom continued to be, she switched to writing. She did, uh, she's done over 100 books. And she does novels, and we collaborate with her today. So she turns her, her novels into, into um, screenplays. And so we're about to actually do a new film of one of her stories about homeless youth in San Francisco called The Art of Love. Um, and uh, my dad did all sorts of entrepreneurial things, but he returned to painting and drawing at the end of his life. He, and, and I mean, very obsessive, like he would go every day to painting uh, uh, figure, figure classes. And then he started a, a class at my gallery. That was a really fun year because he would come every week and he would run the bigger drawing class and he really got back into it. And, and in his words, he would say this uh, about different things, but in his words it was like, I don't have to paint, but why not? It makes me feel this much better, like why not? So um, it's like, you gotta do it. Well, it seems like you guys all strive for excellence, so what is that, was that instilled in you or that you just picked up that aura? Um, there's, there, there is something that happens when you're around other artists, even if you're not making stuff with somebody, if you see their work progress, uh, and this happens in the studio all the time, it happens with my family all the time, if somebody's like, oh my, I'm doing great over here, it's like, oh, I wanna do, that's how you do it? You know, you see it. And uh, 
like with my mom's writing, um, I know I naturally know so much about children's books that you'd have to go to school for and take all these classes. And I was like, well, it's so much more effective to just watch somebody do it. You pick it up. And so in my family, you get a lot of uh, um, crossovers of, of uh, genres, of mediums. Um, so film blends into visual arts, into writing, into, um, you know, there's no, there's no end to like, you, you don't have to just be one thing. And uh, I apologize if it, does it bother you to, for me to ask about your brother? Oh, I'll stop. Like, for example, like, uh, I heard that he, well, well, your oldest brother, I think, that's James, right? Yeah. What was the younger one? What's his name? Dave. Dave, right, right. Um, but I heard that he uh, was getting like several degrees from Ivy League colleges or something like that. Oh or? yeah, he uh, he dropped out of college to pursue acting because it was uh, it was a it was the age where it's like you should do this if you want to do this you should you should you should drop out of school and uh, against my parents' wishes, but he had success, and so later on he felt like. Um, I should go get my degree, and so uh, again, the obsess obsessive nature of our family, he didn't just get a degree, he got like, I don't know how many degrees. Right. <laughs> he All went right. over the top. But that's a, that's a nice place to be. Um, um, again, back to the artist's role, um, sometimes it's seen like, oh, you can only be an artist if you end up being a teacher. And people do that, and it's fine, and nothing wrong with that, um, but it's like, do that and do expand that a little bit. I, I feel like uh, be a teacher, but also uh, dive into the, the local community. Um, you're, the, the artist role is so powerful, uh, and it, it is a struggle, to, just like any art form, a, 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 an actor or a writer. It, it is a struggle, and not everybody makes it. Diversify, uh, uh, and don't get locked into one thing. Well, I love the way your family seems to uh, set the bar for human possibilities. It's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, and I appreciate all of you for it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming in. I learned so much more today than I ever thought I would. <laughs> Yes. Absolutely. Hey, hey, we want to come back. We were talking with Paul when we come back to take the show down to do some active, some heart activations. Okay. Yes. Throwing it out there. So, are there other dogs on the bus besides yours? There's one more big one. What do you mean by art activations? Oh, like get the, get the college kids over here and do some whatever. Dope. Yes. Okay. Or the other art collectors. And you said you want to come back to do that? Oh, yeah, we'll come back. We have to take the showdown. Oh, when you take or, the showdown. Okay. Like, I heard that ball bearings were made invented here. Yeah. Like, we should go work at that factory and use their scrap metal to make something. Yeah, it's Timken. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs>